Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is the Clarets Daily News here on Turfcast. And it's not good news today, I'm afraid. Obviously, a lot of the stuff we've been talking about recently has been ruled by Nistelroy, and now he was Burnley's first choice. And it looked like he wanted to come here and be the Burnley manager. Well, obviously, yesterday we reported that it looked close, but we also reported that Manchester United had started sniffing around and wanted him to be part of Eric Ten Hag's Eric Ten Hag, sorry, coaching staff, potentially as an assistant manager, maybe just a coach. I'm not sure exactly what it is at the minute, but it's looking like he's choosing Manchester United over Burnley. It was a report that came out yesterday in Dutch newspaper ADNL. Uh, and they said, basically just said, Ruud van Nistelrooy is set to choose Manchester United over Burnley. Now, I originally did see this. I was at work, so yesterday around one o'clock. And I remember thinking, oh, it's, 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 I know he's obviously Dutch, but maybe this Dutch newspaper's got the wrong end of the stick. And I didn't dive on it as quickly as as I would have done if it was, you know, somebody legit. But then literally around 15, 20 minutes later, Fabrizio Romano tweeted, Ruud van Nistelrooy and Manchester United return in Ten Hag's coaching staff, advancing staff. It was an exclusive story from yesterday. Obviously, we mentioned yesterday, we mentioned Fabrizio's tweet. But we also mentioned Sasha, and Sasha was saying yesterday how it was very close, and obviously that's why we went with it, because of Sasha's tweets and... From what I gather now, Sasha and Alan Pace had a bit of a falling out, but I feel like they're quite close now because they had a phone call, so I felt like he would have known quite a lot. Uh, but he has then as well tweeted, Big surprise, as told by ADNL, Ruud van Nistelrooy has been convinced by the project explained by Eric Ten Hag. Uh, Ruud van Nistelrooy project has always been to train a first team after PSV, but MUFC has always been the team of his heart and Van Nistelrooy has taken an effective decision. And he goes on to say, wait and see, which is like, as I've said before, his little catchphrase. So it looks like he's not necessarily rejected us, even though I've used it in the headline. You've got to, right? It's YouTube. People won't click on it if I just put, ooh, we don't know what's happening. So if you don't like the rejected in the headline, I'm sorry. Um, when he hasn't really rejected us because we haven't offered him the job yet. I know. But um, so he hasn't really rejected us, but it feels like well, he's turned he's turned the chance down in my opinion. Even though it was never officially offered yet, it looked like he was our first choice. That's what everybody said. He had had quote several meetings with Alan Pace. I think that was Sasha that said that, and the Mirror reported that he had two meetings. I believe he's had two meetings with some other people as well. Craig Bellum is one of them. So it, it's, he has turned down the chance because it looked like it was advancing fast the Burnley role right so I know some people like to get a little bit pernickety about certain words but the way I see it is he's had an offer on the table from Manchester United he knows a potential offer from Burnley could be coming and despite that he's still gone I'm going with the Manchester United one and that to me I mean I'm a little I'm not gonna lie I'm disheartened by it I understand the pull that a club like Manchester United will have over a club like Burnley regardless Obviously, he played for them as well, so that adds to that. But regardless of that, even without the fact that he played for them, it's a very big pull, is Manchester United. But I don't know. The way I see it, if, you, if you're going to... I said it on yesterday's show. If you want to be a number two or a number three or whatever he is or a first-team coach behind somebody else rather than make a name for yourself as a manager, that, to me, tells me a story that is probably not up to it yet. And that's why he's gone for the easier job. Some people may see it as a fast track for the Manchester United job, and that's why he's done it. I've seen a few comments like that yesterday. I don't see it like that. I think if he goes in and Ten Hag is sacked in six months, Ruud van Nistelrooy could get sacked with him, or they could. They're not going to promote him at that stage to manager, right? At very more, at the very best, sorry, he might get caretaker role for two, three games. He's not going to be promoted to the manager. I know some people look at the likes of Solskjaer and say, well, it happened with him and things like that. But he wasn't promoted from within, I don't think. But he came in on an interim basis and then ended up keeping it. And there's also assistant managers that are going to do well, such as Arteta. So people will look at that route. But I think if Ten Hag is sacked in six months... Ruud van Nistelrooy either might get sacked with him 
or like I said, at the very most, be an interim manager for two, three games and then be pushed back to assistant head coach or whatever it is when the new guy comes in. I just I just feel like it's the easy job for him. I think he's gone for the easier job. And look, these reports might not necessarily be, be true, right? Because all these same people that are saying he's now close to Manchester United were saying he were close to Burnley two, three days ago. So... Take it with a pinch of salt as usual, but yeah, it's it's not looking good today for the Ruud van Nistelrooy stuff, unfortunately. It is looking like he's going, well, according to the reports, he's chosen to go to Manchester United as part of Eric Ten Hag's coaching staff over Burnley. It is disheartening. I, I did want him. I was pretty excited on yesterday's video, but uh, it's looking like we're not going to get him. So yeah, I am disappointed, but it, if he'd rather be part of somebody's staff than make himself name as a manager... It tells me a story that is probably not ready yet. So what now then? If obviously we've put all our eggs in the rude basket and he's chosen Manchester United, what do we do now? Although to be fair, I don't think the club have put all their eggs in the rude van Nistelrooy basket. I do feel like he was the first choice. So I know a lot of people sit there and say, oh, they're just reports, it's just speculation. We don't know what the club were actually thinking. But when there's so much noise and so much smoke, there's got to be a fire somewhere. I, I genuinely believe the club... Had Ruud van Nistelrooy down as their first choice. Were probably going to appoint him when they decided what they wanted to do officially and then gone down that route. But it's looking like, as I've said in the last bit, that Ruud van Nistelrooy is going to be going to Manchester United. So what do we do now? Alan Nixon has said several times that Burnley have a list. Ruud van Nistelrooy is probably on that list. You can probably cross that name out now, Alan Pearce, if you're listening. Um, he is... Still saying that Burnley have a list. This is Alan Nixon, of course. You don't know what you're doing. A Burnley fan who, that's just a use it. I'm not just telling you you don't know what you're doing, Alan Pace, if you're watching. There's a Burnley fan on Twitter called You Don't Know What You're Doing. I'm pretty certain he watches these videos, actually. So shout out to you, mate, if you are watching this one. He tweeted Alan Nixon saying, So it looks like Ruud van Nistelrooy is off to United. Where do the Clarets go from here? And he once again just put Burnley have a list. He's mentioned the list several times. I know that... Scott Parker's on it. Frank Lampard probably was on it before recently when we saw the news that he had been ruled out of the running. Does this bring Lampard back in? Probably not, but you never know. Never say never. So we'll see what happens with that one. But Alan Nixon reporting that Burnley have a list and I presume now we're going to go on to that list and have a look at who we want to be the manager. Uh, the current bookies' odds have obviously changed quite a lot since the Ruud van Nistelrooy news. Ruud van Nistelrooy was the favourite and had been the favourite for about a week at this stage yesterday, but obviously with the news about him choosing Man United, he's gone out all the way to 10-1 to 1 now. So if you don't believe that news recently and you do think it'll still be Ruud, you can make yourself a pretty penny if you are a betting person. But the current bookies' odds are this. Craig Bellamy is now odds-on favourite again at 8-11. to 11. Then we've got Scott Parker at 3-1, to 1, Carlos Corberan at 4-1. to 1. Igor Tudor at 8-1. to 1. Somebody told me I was pronouncing that wrong last time. Apparently it's Igor Tudor. So Igor, Igor, whatever. Uh, Ruud van Nistelrooy, as I mentioned, at 10s. Then you've got Bo Henriksen at 12s. Liam Rosinier at 14s. Sorry, Liam Rosinier uh, at 14s. Uh, Marty Covientes at 25s. Thierry Henry at 25s. And Frank Lampard all the way out to 33-1. to 1. So, yeah, where do we go from here? Who knows? The people that have been reported to be on the list, I do find a little bit underwhelming because it is your Scott Parkers, your Frank Lampards, your Craig Bellamy's. I don't want any of them. Looking at that list, again, Carlos Corberan, I'd take him. I think he's done well at West Brom, not spent a lot of money, still managed to finish in the playoffs. Problem with Carlos Corberan is the brand of football I don't think is necessarily what Alan Pearce wants. So what this team is suited for as well, let's be fair, it's not just about what Alan Pearce wants. He's got to make a right decision for the team. And we have a squad built on a certain style of football and you can't just come in and bring somebody who who does the complete opposite, I probably would still take Corbran. I, I would think he would be able to adapt and change styles of play or or something along them lines and, and maybe ad adapt the squad to his style. I, I do think he's a good manager, so I would still I would still like him. Igor Tudor, don't really know much about him, to be honest, so I can't really comment. Bo Henriksen, other than the fact I have £5 on him at 100 to 1, um, I'd take him just, just for that reason alone. Um, but again, don't know too much about him. He's done relatively well um, from what I've seen so far. Liam Rossini, 14s. 
He had he, he they they should have qualified for the playoffs last last year. Should Hull, I, I feel like he should have done better at Hull. Kufientes at QPR, I would actually have, but it, the sample size isn't big enough really. But he did a good job at QPR towards the end of the last year. And then Thierry Henry and Frank Lampard, I presume they're just in there because the names and you never know. But obviously Thierry Henry is the current manager of the France under twenties or under twenty one squad, and they're going to be playing in the Olympics in August. So if, if we've already told. Maxime Esteve that he can't be part of the France Olympic squad I don't think we're going to be poaching their manager anytime soon do you um, but yeah interesting there's been no new links since the Ruud van Nistelrooy news yesterday no new news about what where we're going to go the bookies have obviously gone for Craig Bellamy it's looking like after all this we might just end up going for Bellamy and we could have just avoided all this and appointed him six weeks ago right well not six weeks ago three weeks ago right but um, be interesting to see what we do obviously any update that I see, you'll see on the next Clarets Daily News. But that's it from me. That's all that's out there at the minute. I did see a little bit of news, actually, but it wasn't from a great source that Birmingham City are looking at Bailey, Peacock, Farrell. I bet a lot of you forgot about him. No, he does still belong to Burnley Football Club. So um, if I see anything of decent substance, I'll put it in tomorrow's show and tell you all about it. But just something out there, something small, but it weren't a great source. But yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below about the Rude Van Nistelrooy choosing Manchester United over Burnley. Is it fair enough? It's United and it's his club, to be fair. Or do you agree with me? Do you just think it shows a lack of ambition from him, a lack of balls, a lack of cojones? Like, get in there, be a manager, get us promoted, and then sail off into the sunset to Real Madrid or whatever. That's what company did, obviously, with Bayern. So, yeah, I think it would have been better for his career to come to Burnley. But, you know, fair play to him. He's, you know, he's going to be, you know, working at Manchester United for the next few years. It's his club, so fair enough. But what does this mean for Burnley Football Club? Where do we go from here? Who would you like to see come in as manager? And we'll be back tomorrow. I'll try and get one done tomorrow before the fixtures get out. The fixtures obviously come out at 9am tomorrow morning, so I will try and do that, because if not, I'll be working too much on the fixture list stuff to do a video. So I'll try and get it out nice and early, because I've got work over in Manchester at 12, and I need to be setting off at 11. So let me know what you think in the comments below, like I've said about today's show, and we will be back tomorrow, no matter what, I promise. <laughs>